Hello whistleblowers everywhere. Uh, today's tune breakdown is going to be very different from the usual Scots and Irish stuff which I've been doing. Uh, I know I've done uh, a Welsh tune uh, but this is an English, traditional English tune and it's very very well known, often played at Morris dances. Um, it's a tune called Constant Billy. Um, as I said, it's, it's, it's very, very popular, uh, especially in the south of England. Uh, uh, Cotswold, Morris dancing, um, that, that's a big one for them. Um, so it's a very popular English folk tune called Constant Billy. So as usual, um, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to take it in, in stages. I'm going to play maybe a couple of bars at a time very slowly. Um, now, with a lot of English folk music, there doesn't tend to be the ornamentation that there is in uh, traditional Irish or even in some Scots music. It tends to be played fairly flat um, and there isn't the complexity certainly surrounding ornamentation. Now, you can ornament, uh, but it's not really within the uh, tradition of the English folk scene. Uh, they tend to play the tunes a lot more traditionally without sort of complex ornamentation so uh here's the tune constant billy i'm going to play it through very slowly first at 60 which is my usual tempo um it, it doesn't tend to be played very quickly this tune it's in six eight so it's in jig time so i suppose it's an english folk jig uh, anyway here we go constant billy Okay, so I've set my click to 60. Uh, I'm going to do some note separation by using cuts. You can, of course, if you find it easier, separate the notes which are the same by uh, some very legato tonguing, yeah? So um, what I'll do is I'll do it both ways so you can practice both ways and then decide which way you want to do it. Again, no right or wrong way. Uh, it's what you prefer. So here we go. This is at 60. One, two, three. So in terms of breathing, we want to try and get phrases uh, which are natural. So we want to try and breathe in some natural places, which is better to breathe after a longer note than a shorter note. So if I look at the first phrase, so if I can get to that E and then I can take a breath and then go Now, if you can't get to that E in the third bar, then maybe you can take a breath after the F in the second bar. So, and of course, I would take a breath at the end after the G um, if I needed to do that. So, I'm not going to dictate where you have to breathe in this piece um i'm going to leave it up to you because depending on what speed you're playing it at depending on what whistle you're using um and your own breath capacity they're all going to be different so what you want to do is you want to make sure that your breathing doesn't displace the tempo at all so <clears throat> if you're trying to shoehorn a, a quick breath in after a, a, a quaver or an eighth note then sometimes you're not going to give yourself enough time to get uh, a good enough breath to carry you over to the next phrase so it's much better to breathe after maybe one of those crotchet or quarter note notes 
then trying to squeeze one in uh, and then rushing your breath. Yeah, you want to make it flow. So <clears throat> that's my advice for the breathing. Okay, so let's have a look at the first part. So it's an A, A, B, B. So you play each part twice, you repeat it. So you've got an, uh, a four bar phrase and then you repeated a four bar phrase. Then you've got another four bar phrase and then you're repeating that four bar phrase at the end. So it's like an A, A, B, A kind of um, form. So slowly, let's start off by having a look at the first line. So. So those first two bars, what I'm doing is <clears throat> I'm not tonguing each note. Um, what I'm tending to do is just to play in long, sort of smooth legato phrases. So. So that was all one long phrase. Uh, I tongued the first uh, pick up note D and the rest was just done in one long legato phrase. Now there's nothing wrong if you want to tongue every note, but what you want to try and achieve if you're going to tongue every note is to get that nice smooth legato. So you don't want this. So you've got little gaps between the notes. The idea is we want to get it smooth and flowing. So again, um, what I tend to do um, is only tongue when I need to, yeah, to get separation. Uh, in this case, I can happily play that first couple of bars in the one long phrase. I can probably play up to the E and maybe even the whole of the first A part in the one long phrase. However, do what works best for you. And if, if you want to tongue certain phrases, that's fine. Um, there's no has to's with this, um, it's what works best for you. So here's the first phrase again. Now, if I'm going to introduce some tonguing into this, I would do it in specific places. So I'd go. So I'm, I'm going D, G, high D, then I'm going to tongue the B, slur the G, and slur the B. So, again. So on bar two, you've got the C, A, F, D. Now, to phrase that using tongue, what I do is tongue, slur, tongue, slur. So tongue the C, slur the A, tongue the F, slur the D. Okay, so the next two bars, I'm going to tongue the B. Now you can either cut to get a separation or you can tongue it. And tongue the last note. So here we go. So. So what I did there was I uh, nodded my head where I was introducing some gentle tonguing. Yeah, you can if you want play it all the way through without tonguing any notes, apart from the first. So now with the tonguing, there's a very subtle difference. So you decide, 
which way you prefer and just do it the way you prefer. There's no, as I said, there's no right or wrong way when it comes to the phrasing and the articulation. The most important thing is to make sure that your fingering is accurate and that when you breathe, it doesn't uh, in any way displace the tempo. So that's the A part. Let's have a look at the B part now. So, I, same as the A part, the B part starts on a little what's known as an anacrusis. So it's a little pickup note, which is the D. Uh, so again, uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the breathing works and that we don't displace the time, the tempo. So. come back to repeat it we take that little pickup note D as well yeah and when you come to finish it then just land on the G so let's have a closer look at the B part so we're starting on the D now again if you want to separate with tonguing rather than using cuts that's fine so Um, so that's with tonguing, with cuts. Uh, next bar, same as the first. So we're just going up the scale on that last bar on the, on the second line, which is going A, B, C natural, D, E, F. And then the last part is the same as the first part, pretty much apart from we're starting on a high G. So again, I took a breath after that long E on the third line in the third bar. Um, so again, decide where you need to breathe. It's a unique kind of thing. Um, and again, if you're playing this very slowly, you may need to breathe more. But again, we want to maintain that constant, constant Billy, constant tempo. Um, right. So let's have a look at what we can do in terms of phrasing using some tonguing. So. So I'm tonguing the D. Tongue in the B, C, D, E, and then tongue in the E or cutting the E to get the separation. Next bar, tongue the A. Tongue the second D. Third bar, same as the first. Now with the last bar on the second line, there's a number of different ways you can do it. Uh, you can either tongue the first note and then just let your fingers. Or you can do it in two groups of three. So I'm going to play that with the tongue in that we've just done, that third line. So we've gone on to the last nine where I tongue that high D. Sorry, high G. It's a high G. Um, and then continuing on to the end. So I've gone. So I've tongued D, tongued the B, G, A. And we're going to use that same tonguing figure as we did in bar two on the first line. So tong, slur, tong, slur. Tong the B in the next bar. Tong the E. Tong the D. And tong the G at the end. So I'm going to play the whole of that B part. I'll play it through twice with the articulation that we've just done. Here we go.
So that's just some suggested ways of phrasing this tune. There are lots of different ways to phrase it. Uh, and again, if you're used to separating the notes by using cuts, then by all means, use those cuts to separate it. Um, there's lots of scope to ornament this tune and there's lots of scope to add variation but it's not in keeping with the tradition so I'm gonna forego any variations really um, I mean it's up to you if you wanted to add some variations yeah so I mean something like That's just something off the top of my head, but um, it's not really uh, how you would play it in the English traditional folk uh, repertoire. Yeah, they tend to play it very much keep to the tune. It, after all, it's for dancing, and this one is very much uh, an English Morris dancing favourite. So I would keep it pretty much to the tune. Um, in terms of ornamentation, I mean, you could, you could go... Again, that's not in keeping with the tradition. Uh, so, yeah, we're not going to put any ornaments in at all. I mean, you might want to put the odd cut in. Uh, I think cutting that high G sounds nice and that. Yeah, I think that sounds quite nice. But other than that, um, no need for any ornamentation at all. Keep it straight, keep to the tune. And that's really what this tune's about. Um, okay, so I'm going to play all the way through um, at a reasonable tempo. So we've done it at 60, so I'm going to do it now at 80, which is kind of a more of a up-tempo jig. But this is never played furiously fast. So this is a good tempo, really, and probably something which is around the tempo which is usually played. So one, two, one. So there we have it folks, Constant Billy, English folk jig. Um, not a great deal to this tune in terms of complexity, but it's a lovely tune and it's a very, very catchy tune. I find that whenever I've been playing this, it's one of those earworms that follows me around sometimes for days afterwards. It's such a catchy little tune. Uh, it's a lovely little tune and it doesn't need overdoing. Uh, that's why I've said leave the sort of the more complex ornamentation now it's not within the keeping of the tradition uh, and it doesn't need it simplicity is the name of the game with this one so when you're playing this watch your breathing watch that you don't breathe in a place which is going to um, displace the beat yeah it's a good idea to work with the click now I set mine to 60 to start with and I'm counting it in two dotted crotchets or two dotted quarter notes it's where you would tap your foot one two three four five six yeah da, 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 yeah uh, so that's a good way to practice with that and also practice where you're gonna breathe you might want to print the music out and mark on the music where is a good place to breathe but that will change if you're playing it slowly and when you come to play it at 80 or even maybe a little bit faster than that then your breathing points will change again no need for speed with this tune it's a nice sort of flowing dance uh, piece just imagine 
you're on a village green somewhere in the Cotswolds and you're surrounded by um, a load of Morris dancers and you want to help them keep time. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to go furiously fast. Yeah, nice kind of relaxed pace. So I think 80 is probably as fast as I'd want to go with uh, this tune. So there we have it, Constant Billy. Have a go, have fun, and let me know how you get on. Uh, and again, if you found this tune breakdown helpful, you may like to subscribe to my Whistleblowers YouTube channel. Uh, any comments, please feel free to uh, leave some comments if you want to. Uh, and any future suggestions for tune breakdowns will be greatly received. Um, again, it's, it's all about what the kind of things you would like. Um, I mean, I've done a lot of traditional Irish stuff. I've done a couple of Scots tunes. Uh, I've done one Welsh tune, which I'm hoping actually I'm going to do another one uh, very shortly. Uh, and this is my first uh, traditional English tune, which I've done uh, a breakdown on. Um, so yeah, have fun, enjoy your whistling, and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye for now, folks.